In this video, we will use the Python language and the Pygame library to create the world famous Tetris game. So sit back and let's start coding. So first we import the Pygame library and use the standard template that creates an empty black window of a given resolution, create a 10 by 20 tiles playing field and also determine the size of the tile, based on this we get the game resolution, and then set the number of frames in the game to be 60. And let's put a grid on this playing field. Let's create a two-dimensional array in which each element will be an instance of the rect class, that is, it will be a square of the size we set for the tile, and let's draw it, we will go through the elements of the created array and each element will draw a method to display rectangles, we will draw them empty but with borders. And as a result, we get the display of the playing field. Let's look at the figures in Tetris, let me remind you that seven figures are used, of which it is necessary to make horizontal stripes, so in order to describe the figures, I placed them at the origin of coordinates, so that it is clear that this is a coordinate system not for pixels but for tiles, be sure to first determine the center of rotation of each figures and drawing each shape we write all the coordinates of the tiles into a list starting from the coordinates of the center of rotation. Thus, the coordinates of the tiles of all figures will be placed in a two-dimensional list and, based on this list, we will form an array of instances of the rect class from which we will take our figures, and we will need one more rect instance with which we will draw the constituent parts of each figure, we will also create a variable for the current figure in which we will place the first figure for the test, since each figure consists of four tiles, in order to draw it, it is necessary to loop through four iterations, and in each iteration we will access the x and y attributes by multiplying them by the size of the tile. And as you can see, in this way you can display figures on the screen. Let's make it possible to move the figure horizontally, for this we will create a dx variable and implement control on the left and right keys, that is, when we press one or another key once, we also change the dx value, and now going through the loop, we will change the x attribute to the value of the variable dx. So it became possible to move the figure left and right, but we have no borders. To do this, we will write a function to check the left and right borders at each iteration for each tile of the shape, but to implement all this we need a deep copy function, all because we constantly change elements from lists and the elements themselves are instances of a non-standard Python class, therefore before changing the attributes of the figure, we will create a deep copy of the figure itself, and if the figure goes beyond the boundaries, then we restore the original position of the figure from the copy and break the cycle. So let's evaluate, oops made a minor inaccuracy here, but now the figures do not go beyond the border of the field. And now let's implement the fall of the figure, firstly, I have defined three variables responsible for the smoothness of the fall, that is, we will have a counter that increases by the value of the animation speed, and when the limit is reached, we will increase the changes in the y coordinate by 1. Well, now our figure is in free fall, by the way, let's give acceleration to the figure when the down key is pressed, for this we will reduce the limit variable in case the button is pressed, and now we can send the figure down at high speed. Let's move on to the implementation of stopping the figures at the bottom of the playing field. Import the functions of random choice in the random range generator, create a two-dimensional array filled with zeros, this will be a map of the playing field on which we will mark the position of the fallen figures, and make the initial figure random, we will also select a new random figure upon landing current figure. And of course, we will add new conditions to the border check function, we will return a false value when the figure has reached the bottom and if another figure already lies in the playing field at these coordinates. So, if this condition is met, we will enter the color of the fallen figure into the playing field map, now let all the figures be white, and so that we can see all the fallen figures, we need to draw them on the playing field map. To do this, we iterate in a loop over the elements and where the color is stored instead of the zero value, then immediately using the coordinates of this element and draw a square of the same color. Let's see the result, the figures are perfectly stacked on top of each other as expected. And now let's move on to the implementation of the rotation of the figures, for this we will create a boolean variable that, when the up key is pressed, will take on a true value to perform the rotation, we will also write a separate block of code, as I mentioned earlier, the description of the coordinates of the figures begins with the center of rotation and we need to pass center of rotation into a separate variable. We will rotate the figures clockwise by 90 degrees and for this there is a simple algorithm, for each constituent element of the figure we need to calculate the difference between the coordinates of the figure and the center of rotation, and in order to get new coordinates of the tile, then for the center of rotation from the x coordinates subtract the difference obtained for y axis, and for the y coordinate of the center of rotation, add the difference for the x axis. Damn, I hope I explained it clearly or not very well. <laughs> 
But nevertheless, the figures now rotate as expected and remain, you yourself understand the last and important point, we need to remove the filled horizontal lines, for this we define a variable denoting the last line on the playing field, in the first cycle we will move from the last line to the first, and define counter of filled tiles, in the second cycle we will rewrite all elements using the variable entered at the beginning, in general, we will move to the next row only when the line is incomplete, the counter will tell us about this and at the same time the filled lines will simply be overridden from above with incomplete lines. Well, let's take a look and collect one line. And as you can see everything works fine, we can say it turned out to be a full-fledged classic Tetris mechanism, but everything turned out to be somehow gray and unattractive, so let's add colors and interactive for our game. To begin with, we will expand the area of the working window, while the playing field will now be on a separate surface, and for each surface we will select a picture that is suitable for resolution, it remains to load these pictures from the folder you installed and then, using the blit method, first place the pictures on our surfaces and at the end we will place the surface playing field on the main window. Well, this way it will be much more interesting and there is also a place to display useful information, and now let's color our figures, for this I will create a lambda function to get a random color and a new variable where we will enter this color, and then we need to make small changes in case the figure falls and also when drawing it. And as you can see, our picture has become even nicer, next I propose to make the inscription of the game itself, for this we will take a suitable font and of course load it, and I will make two font sizes, the larger font is for the inscription with the game, and the other will serve for the rest of the information, then render the inscription and use the blit method to display it at the top right. Well, the inscription is ready, many probably remember that we should have information about which figure will be next, for this we will introduce the variables of the same name for the next figure and the color for it, the figure, as well as the color, will be chosen randomly, when the figure falls, then the current figure is assigned these variables, and we will also make a random choice again, well, it remains to draw this next figure, we will do it in the same way as the base figure, only change the surfaces from drawing and enter the value of the next color, and we also need to move it to the place we need. And now you can clearly see which figure will be next, so you can now plan the next actions in the game, and for the full picture I wanted to display the number of points scored, for this we will create a variable for them and a variable for the lines collected in a row, and also define a dictionary for accrual points by the number of collected lines, so in the case of full lines, we will slightly increase the speed of the fall of the figure and count the number of these lines, and then we will award points for this number. And also, in order to feel a full-fledged game, in the case of full lines, we will set a slight delay, and then we will add inscriptions to the main window, determine the location, font and color. So let's check this case, collect the full line again and, wonderfully, we began to earn points. And then I wanted to make a display of our achievements in the game, for this we will save and display the score record, and we will store this record in a separate file. And for this we will write two functions, the first one will be needed to get the value of the record from the file, in it we will open the file and read information about the record, and if this file does not exist, we will create it and write zero points into it. And with the help of the second function, we will enter a new record if the points scored are greater than the previous record, so first we will get information about the record, but we will enter a new record in the event of the end of the game, so let's arrange this ending. In the case when any figure has reached the upper limit of the playing field, we will call the record setting function and at the same time immediately clear the game map, set the initial parameters for the animation speed and reset the points scored, and by the way, for the full picture, we will make an animated ending, we will gradually fill our entire playing field as colored squares. And let's test, again try to collect a full line and deliberately lose the game. And as you can see, everything is working properly and we can say that the classic Tetris game is done. Subscribe to the channel and see you soon.